Welcome to episode one of Can't Sleep's debut web series, Unsolved Australia, where we'll be looking at our country's dark and sometimes overlooked past of murder and mystery. Today, we'll be looking at the 1994 discovery of a John Doe, famously nicknamed the Rack Man, who remained unidentified until 24 years later in 2018. On the early morning of August 11, 1994, Local fisherman Mark Peterson and his crew had set off in his trawler, the Lady Marion, to catch squid in Sydney's Hawkesbury River. Peterson felt a tug on his net, and thinking it was a catch, quickly hauled it aboard. Instead, what he found was the last thing any fisherman would expect. A 1.82 metre steel crucifix, tied to it wrapped in black plastic, were bones. Peterson quickly called it in and came back to shore where the remains were recovered by police. The day after the crucifix was recovered, forensic pathologists examined the bones and confirmed that they were, in fact, human, belonging to a Caucasian man aged between 21 and 46 years old, 163 centimetres tall, and who died from blunt force trauma to the head. The entire body was wrapped in black plastic, with an additional two bags over the head. Orange rope and wire were used to secure it to the frame. Barnacles on the crucifix were studied, and the pathologist concluded that the body had been in the river for over a year. He had no dental fillings to identify him by. However, they noticed his lower right molar had been removed at a young age. Because of his time in the river, the fingerprints were unidentifiable, and all other DNA examples were of poor quality and couldn't be used. The man had been wearing an Everything Australian t-shirt, size medium pair of sweatpants with the label, no sweat, and a lighter and a packet of Benson and Hedges cigarettes. What made this case even more disturbing was that the frame was made to fit the victim's exact dimensions, using a length of flat metal plate and two solid metal bars that matched his wingspan perfectly. Two pieces of reinforcing rod had also been attached and bent into an L shape over the man's body as well. A facial reconstruction was made using the bone structure of the skull that remained, and despite being quickly sent to the media with a $100,000 reward for information, nobody came forward. The further police investigated, the less this seemed like a religious sentiment or the work of a cult, and more like well-planned, cold-blooded murder. The welds on the crucifix were professional, and it was far too heavy for one person to have transported or dumped in the river suggesting that multiple people had taken part in not only crafting it, but dumping the body as well. They couldn't determine whether the victim was alive or already deceased before being placed on the crucifix. Due to the nature of the crime, police had no leads to investigate or witnesses, and had it not been for Mark Peterson, the body may have never been found. They had attempted to identify the remains through missing persons reports, including those of underground figures. However, came up short due to no one's descriptions matching that of the skeleton that was recovered. For nearly 25 years, the victim remained unidentified. However, on August 28, 2018, news reports surfaced that new DNA technology had finally identified the body of the mysterious rack man to be that of Max Tanzewski, a known gambling addict. Before his death, Max had withdrawn roughly 1800 Australian dollars from his bank account. However, he was never seen alive again. He was reported missing one year before the crucified remains were recovered from the Hawkesbury River. Despite his identity finally being known, mystery still surrounds his death. Police have no new leads in regards to who was involved in his murder, and the case has now been referred back to the Cold Case Homicide Squad, and investigations carry on this day. What are your guys' thoughts on this case? Let me know down below. Personally, considering that the crucifix was made specifically for his dimensions and included attachments made purely to hold him in place, I'd say this wasn't a random attack and was meant for Max himself. Whoever did it probably knew him personally and or wanted him dead before he initially disappeared. Gambling debts are too often tied into underworld connections so it's also possible that he borrowed money from the wrong people and couldn't afford to pay it back. 
Maybe that $1,800 was a show of good faith he'd be able to make those repayments, but ultimately, it wasn't enough to clear his debt. I initially thought that the symbolic nature of the crucifix probably suggested a cult, or perhaps a serial killer of sorts. However, I couldn't find any more news articles or information that followed this sort of storyline. As I mentioned earlier too, the frame was reportedly very heavy, and one person probably wasn't able to dispose of it alone, so the cult or serial killer or killer's idea probably isn't that far-fetched. There's definitely more questions than answers. It's an intriguing case, no doubt, and two decades on, it's just as gruesome and bone-chilling to think about now as it was in 1994. We can only hope that one day, a guilty conscience might shed some new light. If you do happen to have any information, please contact Crime Stoppers or the New South Wales Police Force. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Unsolved Australia. Subscribe to Can't Sleep and stay up to date with future uploads and leave a comment with your own opinions and theories on what might have happened or other murders or mysteries you think we should cover.